What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Money Monday. Holy moly. I'll tell you what, my sales, I hope everybody's sales are like rocking and rolling right now during basically the busiest week of the year for online sales, holidays, Christmas, the whole thing. But I am experiencing the slowest week I have had in 2020. That's right. With a thousand listings, I've had the slowest week I've ever had. So I need this as motivation more than ever. Hopefully, you folks are all doing much better than I am because it is absolutely pathetic. So Money Monday, I'm going to pull 10 monster bolos from the eBay catalog. All of these are sold within the last 72 hours. And the fun thing about this episode is there are a lot of other like bonus bolos in as we look through some of the recent solds. So a lot tucked into just the 10 that we're going to feature here. These ones are pretty sweet though. I'll tell you what, none of which came out of my store because I'm dead in the water and I don't know what to do to make it any better without dropping everything to like three bucks. So anyways, a little housekeeping here, dadplanetofficial at gmail.com. If you've got a bowl you want me to feature, send me an email. If I like it, I'll uh, I'll pop it in there and I'll, I'll shout your store out, maybe drive some additional sales to you. But yeah, we got 10 bolos coming up here on Money Monday that I hope you folks love. So anyway, let's get into it. All right, so the first one is a vintage Filson bag. Nice twill finish. Uh, model number on this guy is 224. And we're gonna, I'm gonna try to get you pictures of, there we go. So picture of the tag right there, genuine Filson. It's CC Filson is what you're looking for. This bag is really gorgeous, probably pristine on the inside. They don't even show pictures on the inside. That's all right. But at any rate, um, anytime you see a CC Filson item, Make sure you look it up because they're in high demand. So this one sold for 358 bucks, almost 359. It got 13 bids and this model bag is very popular. Here's another one down here, 224, that got a bid for $109. This one, 217, another one, 213. 255. I feel like this one looks a little bit more olive. I don't know if they used that as a keyword but uh, these ones come in at a little bit more tan. So if I have the colors correct and they're different, one's tan, one's olive green, then it looks like the olive green is getting a little bit higher of a price. Could just be the way the pictures came out. So I don't know if the colors are different or not. But anyways, 358 bucks is a slam dunk. Yeah, the stores will miss this, so keep your eye out for it for sure. We'll move on to the next one. There are no comparable sales for this item that I could find. Vintage Ralph Lauren volleyball shorts. The vintage like early to mid 90s Ralph Lauren stuff is just out of control right now. So um, these were made in the USA. I'll show you the tag, there you go. Polo by Ralph Lauren, 100% nylon. Really cool find. And you know, with no comparable sales, like maybe there's something on pick click or uh, worth point of a sale that has happened in the last year, two years, or maybe more. But I wouldn't know how to price this without comparables. So if there were no comparables in the last two or three years and they just shot high, kudos to them because these sold for a huge dollar amount. So 450 bucks for this pair of shorts in, yeah, towards the end of December. Awesome, awesome sale. Kudos to that seller for sure. Uh, like I said, no, no comps, so we'll move on to the next one. You hear a lot about Coleman lamps. You've seen me sell some of them. Uh, I've actually featured, I think, at least one in a previous Money Monday video, but don't sleep on the on the really early Sears lamps too, okay? So this is a early model, and they used uh, J.C. Higgins. So J.C. Higgins was just a brand name that Sears used, like really early 1900s, like early to mid like 1900, 1900, 1950, somewhere around there. Although I don't see uh, J.C. Higgins on the item, but the, they featured it in the title. So maybe there's something to that. Maybe this is, in fact, a J.C. Uh, Higgins camping lantern, but uh, it sold for a huge dollar amount. So uh, don't sleep on this. I know it says Coleman there. This is definitely one of the very, very early Sears models. The model number is 10-71. It, there you go. There it is in the title. This was bid three, uh, 29 times up to 380 bucks. The green color will get you, uh, you know, between 250 to 400, but there's a, there's a blue color that does just as well. So 99 bucks here. Model number is 1070 on the blue. Here's a new one for 500, a couple hundreds here, 
132. This doesn't look like this has, oh, this is a 771, doesn't have any glass. Um, but yeah, keep your eye out for Sears related, not just Coleman brands. Because you're in the money when you find it. We'll move on to the next one. Somebody paid $318.50 for this binder. Uh, okay. Um, boy, I wish I could make that sale today. Uh, there are no comparables like this binder, but early Lisa Frank, I mean, the stuff is just uh, just going out of control. I mean, condition is, you know, indicative of what you would find for something that's over, what, 30, 40 years old at this point. All of the stickers have been used uh, and it's still sold for 320 bucks. You know, even if you find vintage Lisa Frank binders that are not this version, you're still gonna make good money on them. So here's, you know, one with the sandcastle and some puppies for 37 bucks. Um, 35 here, it's a fuzzy one for 60. Some kitty cats for a best offer. Uh, here's a lot of them. This one was, looks like it was a little bit underpriced, 20 bucks for the, for the uh, almost like a little trapper keeper style binder. But yeah, you can see right here, you know, the puppies seem to do well. We, all of Lisa Frank does very, very well. I just sold something for 25, 30 bucks of hers, like a jewelry case that was um, like music, kind of a music box jewelry case type of thing. I don't know. Anyway, her stuff sells really, really well. The Aliens, and uh, yeah, that one got 318 bucks. So if you got any old Lisa Frank stuff sitting around in your closets, dig it out, because big money right there. We'll move on to the next one. You know, signage is obvious. Uh, this is Toys R Us. One of them says customer pickup. One of them says welcome friends. And I, if there are comparables, I didn't bother uh, featuring them on the next screen. But what this is most likely going to, if you ask me, is another store. Maybe not in the US, but in Canada, the Toys R Us is still around. So if somebody really wanted this man cave item, then okay, they paid $800 for it, no problem. But if you had to ask me, this is going to um, another store somewhere once it reaches its original destination if it's not going directly um, overseas because of the cost associated with the item being so large. So who knows, maybe it's going to a distribution center that's still being used in the US, I don't really know. Um, but the point here is, don't be afraid to target commercial buyers, no matter what it is you're selling, because commercial buyers just use these as expenses. So not a uh, not a big deal to spend that amount of money for them. Or you maybe just had somebody nuts that spent almost a thousand dollars to you know put this in their basement. I don't really know. Seller said that they have a little bit of damage on them, but I mean, just a really really cool item, neat memento. I wonder if the person that got possession of these paid for them, um, or if they were like out on the back dock type of thing, because. Um, I saw a lot of like, hey, I got the um, signage lettering. Uh, it was just sitting in the back dock and I grabbed it, which, you know, I don't know if that's uh, technically allowed, but listen, if it's in the garbage and there are no laws associated with uh, garbage picking in your, in your local community, then, you know, more power to you. But uh, I feel like those things should have probably gone to auction. At any rate, target the commercial buyer. We'll move on to the next one, which is what I believe to be the holy grail in McDonald's hats. So this is a vintage 90 snapback trucker hat mesh McDonald's, the red version. This one only got one bid for $329. I think the market tops out at about $500 for this hat, somewhere in between five and $600. Vintage McDonald's hats, McDonald's trucker hats are are gonna do well for you regardless. So let's uh, let's scroll down. This looks like the same one. You know, maybe it was a non-paying bidder, but kudos to them. They got a higher price the second time around. And I'll keep scrolling down. Here's two vintage hats that sold for thirty. Uh, a Monopoly one that uh, was a best offer. The um, I forget what this guy's name was. Is his name Mac? Uh, that little crescent moon. 22 bucks that came from Australia. Uh, here's another one, best offer, 395. That's the grail right there. And I think it turns up a few more times. This one got 34 bids for 275 bucks. It's one for 20. Um, 39 bids on this one for 510. Is that the same one as this one? Yeah, so. Um, I, you can probably get $500 for this hat if you find it is what I'm what I'm trying to get at here. So vintage McDonald's trucker hats for sure, but that looks like that's the holy grail. So keep your eye out for it. Hit up your buddies that work at McDonald's. Um, see if uh, any of them or past family members have that sitting around because it's worth a lot of money. So keep that in mind. We'll move on to the next one, which is also a hat. This has to be the holy grail 
of Hummer hats. Now, uh, it did not sell for $1,000. It sold for $509, but there are none like it. A Hummer Aerospace and Defense uh, vintage snapback mesh hat that is in um, like new condition, if you ask me, made in the USA. This foam here on hats like these will, will start to flake away. Don't let that turn you off. Uh, somebody will still buy it, especially if it's a hat like this. So if that is like really flaking away and it's leaving residue, don't, don't let that turn you off. Make sure you still make the purchase for sure. So yeah, um, over 500 bucks for this Hummer hat, which looks to be extremely hard to find. And you know, looking for vintage Hummer mesh hats doesn't turn up the brand Hummer every time, but there's still some really good goodies tucked away in here. So here's a, a vintage 80s Michelin patch hat that was a new listing that got a bit of 40 bucks, um, a couple of lots. Then you got here W.L. Weller Special Reserve uh, Kentucky Bourbon that sold for $41. I use Snap-on Tools Vintage Hat that sold for $48. That got 16 bids. And Grill Fertilizer, the seed companies, all of those hats, they always do well. Uh, this one got 12 bids for $47. Motocraft Quality Parts, 32 bids, $94. Make sure you're sourcing those vintage mesh hats, ladies and gentlemen, because there's a ton of money. And then look at this case, four bids for $42. Fisher for $30, for for 40, another Andro fertilizer for 83. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, road handler, all season. Tires, 80 bucks, 22 bids. Vintage John Deere, no brainer. Um, Dyquat, I think that's herbicide, 21 bids, 65 bucks. The list goes on and on and on and on. So many bolos in just this list right here for sure. And like all of them, you know, look, December 10th, November 13th, December 20th, October 31st on the, uh, um, O's gold down there. Recent, recent sales, tons of money. We'll move on to the next one, which is something you're probably never ever going to see again. Is a Christopher Radko Liza Minnelli ornament. Vintage. She looks amazing. There are no comparables like this. Uh, and people went bananas over it to the tune of 32 bids all the way up to almost $638. Um, unbelievable sale. It doesn't even look like lots of lots of uh, uh, cracking, crazing CR for Christopher Radko, and then Christopher Radko on the tag. You guys uh, that watched my uh, one of my recent videos, you know I had Christopher Radko in it, and I show you what to look for. Six hundred thirty-eight bucks, Liza Minnelli, home run, amazing. We'll move on to the next one. Nike waffles. These are the Nebraska Corn Huskers. Uh, huge, huge money. What I notice is the, in the vintage Nike waffles, if there is a team associated with that shoe, you're going to do a little bit better than just the average um, Nike waffle shoes in most cases. There will be some outliers. We might even see one on the next screen. Uh, but here's what these shoes look like. These pictures are absolutely terrible. Way too many shadows um, for a pair of shoes that sold for the amount that it did. But again, the buyer knows it's all good. No, no worries. Soles are just in amazing condition. Even the laces are in amazing condition. The entire shoe, relative to its age and use, fabulous find. Uh, and where I want to show you a picture of the back of them. Where is that picture? I got to go to the front. Here we go. It says Huskers on the back. And they sold for almost $900, 28 bids. That's just crazy train. So vintage Nike waffle. There are 91 recent sales and yeah, 300 bucks for these bad boys, even 50 for these, for these right here. Uh, waffle trainers right here for 275. Even the, the promo sign got 200 bucks. That's insane. Here's the pair we just saw. Um, 300 here. And again, these are items that are going to slip through. So this is the type of item that you really, really want to hone in on. Uh, because when it comes out on the cart or it's sitting there on the shelves, no one knows. So you come equipped with that and you're going to make a ton of money. Um, really interesting color right here, Nike Liberators. These aren't, nah, these maybe they had waffle soles. Um, best offer right there. Um, blue color, 300 I'm going to scroll down because there's another pair that I thought I saw that sold for a ton of money. But yeah, you can see here the Nike waffles are the way to go. Here's Nike waffle trainers that sold for almost $1,300. When did this sale take place? This ended on November 1st. Let's take a look at the condition of these ones as well. Not team associated, but 
early early trainers. Soles look great. Thirteen hundred dollars for a pair of old Nikes that no one's going to catch at, at like the shop good world shop good wills of the world. So keep your eye out for that. We're going to move on to the last one, ladies and gentlemen. A vintage piece of Fiesta wear green cream soup bowl. I'll maximize the pictures for you. Any ideas what it sold for? This thing sold for $1,650. Holy macaroni. Fiesta wear, by the way, is the only thing that we eat off of. All the plates, bowls, cups, it's all we use. Um, insane. Vintage, fi vintage rare Fiesta wear always does well. It always does well. A lot of the earlier stuff is lead free. I don't know if the new stuff is also lead free. Sometimes that makes a, a difference. Um, the color absolutely makes a difference um, price-wise when you are uh, sourcing Fiesta wear. So keep that in mind. A lot of Goodwills know about it. They're, it's heavy. It's well made. So they do jack the price up on them for sure. They're always looking them up. Um, I mean, when you're just used to seeing Walmart plates all day and you see a piece of Fiesta wear come through, like it's just, it's easy. This piece, however, not so easy to uh, to come up with. So here's a pair of salt, a ball salt and pepper shakers that sold for 38 bucks. Here's the piece we were just looking at. This looks like a tiered cake stand right here. It sold for 75, pretty nice piece. Um, jam jar does not have the spoon, 185, uh, 123 bucks. Does this look like the one we just saw? If it is, you think this seller would have a heart attack if they knew the one that we just looked at sold for uh, $1,300 or uh, $1,600. Now, I don't know if they're the same. I don't know if there's a color difference here between the, the greens, but yeah, this was bid up to $101. There's got to be something different about this that I really didn't pay attention to, um, making it the reason that there's such a big price discrepancy. But yeah, vintage Fiesta wear, you know, no brainer, but that piece right there, home run, $1,650, unbelievable. And yeah, that's uh, that's all we got there. What'd you think about that? A lot of power packed bolos in there. Really good stuff. I'm done. That's it. I'm gonna go cry in a corner or something. I don't know. Like hit a punching bag. I don't really know what to do. I'm super frustrated with my sales, but I appreciate it. Make sure you are subscribed. If you are not subscribed already, leave me a like if you liked what you saw in this video. Thank you for letting me commiserate with you. Uh, Brendan here, Dad Planet. Appreciate it. We'll see you in the next video.